Hey there, and welcome to this episode of That Was History. I'm your host, Cliff Langston, and in this episode, I'm going to show you how humanity as a whole is like a little child playing with fire. In the name of science and development, we get ourselves into situations before we truly know what the consequences will be. Our knowledge of nuclear weapons and power plants is probably the best example of this. We think we understand the potential and consequences of the energy, but we almost certainly do not. Let's go back to the 1940s, and I'll show you what I mean. In the name of science in the great US of A, testing began in the mid-1940s to understand and equip weapons with nuclear technology. This was known as the Manhattan Project and the first atomic device explosion would occur at the Trinity site in New Mexico. What's funny about this situation is that the United States was pretty much like, well, uh, that went successful, so who's up for bombing Japan? Quite literally, the second and third times that nuclear weapons had ever been used was on Japan during the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings. Like children playing with fire, the United States didn't fully understand what they were about to unleash. They knew it would be devastating, they knew it would help end the war in the Pacific, but they weren't counting on the amount of nuclear fallout afterwards. Obviously people close to the blast site were going to be affected, but the radiation that lingered afterwards caused radiation poisoning, deformities, cancer, and other health problems for many generations after World War II. Following this, the United States designated Bikini Atoll as their official nuclear test site to test and better understand the capabilities of this newly developed technology. The inhabitants of the island were relocated and tests began in order to determine how ships, land vehicles, bunkers, and other military equipment would handle the impact of atomic bombs. To be more specific, the test subjects included a large number of tanks and bulldozers, as well as 150 airplanes and 250 naval vessels. This seems like a good use of the equipment, right? Let's just take 400 military grade pieces of equipment and blow them up, some of which included test animals for radiation poison studies, by the way. Can I make that child comparison one more time? I, th I think it applies here. Even more interesting is how 75 ships had to be quarantined on September 25th of 1946 due to the possibility of radioactive contamination. These ships weren't even supposed to be part of the test, but because of our misunderstanding of atomic bombs, many sailors and ships would be affected. The United States made even further miscalculations when the original inhabitants of the islands were allowed back on Bikini Atoll after the testings were over. This happened in the 1970s, and after only a short stay on the island, the residents had to leave again in 1978. This was due to the fact that radioactive levels were too high and the inhabitants were developing cancer, having pregnancy problems, or giving birth to children with birth defects. Modern scientists believe that the island will be ready for habitation again in upcoming years, but Bikini Atoll is still uninhabited to this day. Several lawsuits have come up between the islanders and the United States, but so far the U.S. has refused to pay the settled amounts to the affected parties. In one such settlement, the islanders were granted over $500 million but have yet to see a dime of it. It's very tragic, which brings me to today's comment question. What do you think of nuclear weapons and the Bikini Atoll situation? Leave me a comment down below. Thanks for watching this episode of That Was History. You can use the links on screen to check out yesterday's episode or our social media sites. Be sure to hit that thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Thanks again, and I'll see you later.